Hey guys, so today we're looking at the 2021 Giant Stance. So the Stance in the Giant line is their entry level full suspension bike. It's 120 millimeters of suspension in the back and 130 millimeters of suspension in the front. Its geometry is a pretty trail oriented geometry. Um, and I would say that this is an excellent bike um, as that first sort of step up into a little bit more serious bike once you're realizing it's time to get on a full suspension because you're seeing your friends feeling a bit more comfortable in the rooty or rocky stuff. Um, you're getting a little bit sore in the back, hands, bum sort of thing on a rockier rides. So this is that step up that gets you into um, some of the comfort and performance advantages of going with a full suspension bike while still keeping your budget um, in the friendly range. So $20.99, that's the Canadian price on the stance. So an interesting thing on this bike is that Giant makes a stance, this one, which has 27.5 inch wheels. It also, they also make one that is a stance 29, which is virtually the identical bike, uh, but with 29 inch wheels. So we're bringing in uh, both models because um, I think they're actually uh, both really good. And what they're doing a little bit with these is um, skewing the 29er to be a little bit more of a taller person's bike. So on 29er, they go up to an extra large. In this 27.5 version, they only go up to a size large, but they start at a size extra small. So suitable for somebody down to about five foot one. So I'll show you some of the highlights on this bike. Uh, some of the things I really like, some of the things I would maybe change. Um, and we'll give you a quick rundown of um, how sizing would work on this guy. So as I mentioned, this is going to be a starter bike, um, a starter full suspension. So this means you've probably fallen in love with riding trails. Um, you want more comfort. You want your tires in contact with the ground more so you can maybe go around corners a little bit faster, uh, have a bit more comfort, uh, not be bounced off your pedals going through rougher stuff. That's pretty much what this bike is trying to do for you. That 120 millimeters of travel in the back is enough that it's going to really help you for those things I mentioned. Um, but it's not so much that we need to get into a super sophisticated rear suspension design. So that kind of goes hand in hand with this being a more um, budget friendly kind of an offering. So to start with on this bike, um, Shimano Dior 12 speed drivetrain. So on a Shimano Dior drivetrain like this, that means that we have a cassette that goes from 10 10 teeth up to 51 teeth. So that's a huge gear range um, and basically takes away the need to have any sort of front derailleur. So that means we can just have a narrow wide um, chain ring on there. That's gonna look after holding the chain on um, quite confidently when we're going through bumpy stuff. This is also a clutch rear derailleur. So that little thing I'm moving, that's the clutch in the on position that gives us a very, very strong spring. They give you the option of turning the clutch off so that if you get a flat, you're not battling against all of that tension in the derailleur. Um, the alternative in the one x 12 world at this budget level is the SRAM SX drivetrain. And I would say I have not spoken to a bike mechanic yet who wouldn't um, take this Dior setup over that SRAM SX setup uh, if given the option. Um, the one thing we find is this, this is more consistently good where we would find when building up bikes with SRAM SX, um, we would have some bikes that we would really struggle to get the shifting to work nicely and others it might work well. On these, it just seems across the board, you get really nice, crisp, positive shifting. So, as I mentioned in this stance with 27.5 wheels, um, a real upside of this bike here is the fact that it's going up to 2.6 inch wide tires. They're tubeless tires, and they're also set up, um, set up tubeless 
from the factory. So compared to a lot of bikes that might have a tubeless ready rim and may or may not have a tubeless ready tire, this means this tire, if you were to buy this as an aftermarket tire, it would be um, sort of roughly $100 per tire. You'd be spending 40 bucks on some sealant, you'd be spending um, 25 on some valves, and you would need it set up tubeless. All of those costs are already included in this um, sort of already best price point bike. Um, we've got some Praxis cranks on here. They're a nice alloy two-piece crank, a Suntour radon rear shock. That red dial that we're looking at means that it's got a rebound adjustment on there. So it's an air shock with rebounds. So that's giving you the two main pieces of adjustment to be able to set up a bike um, to have its suspension working for you. This is an empty port um, for a cable to run a dropper. Um, so at the moment, it's a standard seat post on here. A new uh, saddle design for this year from Giant, which uh, is getting much better reviews than previous designs. Uh, giant cockpit, so we have a 60 millimeter stem. This is a size large that we're looking at here. 780 millimeter wide Giant handlebars. Shimano MT201 um, hydraulic disc brakes and what I think is besides the tires one of the other really big uh, standouts on this bike this is the uh, giant 34 crest air fork so giant basically took it upon themselves um, not being thrilled with the options for a bike like this to still keep this 2099 price point they basically went out and just designed their own fork and these um, we've now seen them out on the market for the last year. They work well, um, they reduce the weight compared to the, the common alternative to this being um, either an SR Suntour fork or a RockShox Recon. Um, I would say this is a more sophisticated fork and it's lighter. Um, you've got some neat things like the way they Brace that fork is sort of a hollow section in the arch there. Nice black stanchions. It is an air fork again. That is the compression adjustment on there. It's got a few levels between on some of the forks. All you would have is open or locked out. In this case, you can see it's kind of got these um, indents and each one of those is actually a noticeable amount of compression uh, dampening and what that means is that it is firming up your fork in the steps before finally when you get to that setting over there it is just a rigid locked out fork so that's a fair amount of sophistication when you're getting into stuff that we would call budget friendly um, down below here, that red knob, that is the rebound adjustment. Um, holding on to those tires that I'm such a big fan of, and I should mention, this is a combo uh, tire set here. The Maxxis Recon on the front, and then an Ardent Race on the rear. I would say this is a really nice combination for tires um, as far as being a relatively fast rolling uh, setup, um, sophisticated enough to be tubeless, and also just a little bit more meat on the front tires here. Um, the big upside for these being tubeless and being 2.6s um, that caters to this bike very, very well is the fact that learning to ride with lower tire pressure um, when you're at this sort of intermediate, getting serious about riding bikes sort of level, if you can ride your tires softer, you really start to feel the benefits of your tires holding on better in corners, in braking, when you're going over um, the edges of roots and rocks and stuff like that. So this is really doing a tire setup that caters correctly, I would say, to the crowd that the bike is designed for. Um, this is a quick release rear axle on here. The front end is done with a through axle. It's also got a tapered head.
head tube and steer tube. That's something that helps to give us a little bit more precise steering and a little bit more stiffness in the front end of the bike. Um, so those are kind of the features. This is just to show we've got um, a frame that kind of goes from, a, if I can get this guy to focus in there, goes from sort of a matte finish into a glossy finish as we come back here. So they're keeping it pretty subtle. You're not going to feel like your uh, your bike is a bright blinking disco ball or anything. This is uh, keeping it fairly basic. Um, some of the geometry numbers. So the seat tube angle, which is that angle of the seat there. That's 74 degrees, which I would say isn't too steep. It's not too slack. Um, head tube angle is 67 and a half degrees. Uh, the rear end on this bike, and when we talk rear end on a bike, it's the distance from your rear axle to the center of your cranks. Um, that can affect um, how stable your bike is if it's really long, um, but if it's too long, it can make it more difficult for you to lift the front end of the bike off the ground if you're trying to go up over a step, um, like a root or rock, something like that. Um, so I would say that they've taken, this is 435 millimeters, that's in a nice range that leaves you with some stability, but also um, a bit of the extra maneuverability you might be after. Uh, for sizing on this guy, as I mentioned, they go from extra small to large. Giant's recommendation is 5.1 to 5.4 on an extra small, 5.4 to 5.7 on a small, 5.7 to 5.10 on a medium, and 5.10 to, I think they say even much bigger in a large, but I would say up to six foot one. The one thing I would add to that is if you're maybe um, more aggressive and are looking to add a little bit of stability, I would consider sizing up a bike um, just to get a little bit longer frame and then in conjunction what you would do is you would upgrade the bike with a little bit shorter stem when you do that. That will give you a little bit more distance in your wheelbase, um, which makes the bike a little bit more stable um, and it will sort of new school the bike a little bit in its handling. But I think this is a very appropriate geometry for the kind of crowd that they're catering to who's going to appreciate a bigger, softer tire, um, a modern but not too modern geometry. So I weighed this particular bike, once again a size large, and it's 30.3 pounds. Um, so I think that's a pretty respectable weight. Um, I would have expected it to be heavier if it weren't for that fork. Um, competing bikes, I would say I wouldn't be shocked to see 34, 35 pounds in a a light fork can quite literally take a pound or two off the weight of a bike alone. The tubeless tires take the weight of the tubes off. Um, so it's, it's a well put together bike to keep a reasonable weight um, right off the showroom floor. Um, so if I were buying this bike, um, I would say the things that would tempt me most are I would definitely if not right off the bat, I would be thinking about getting a dropper seat post as soon as I could afford to get one. At $20.99, um, that still puts this bike at say $2,400 with a giant dropper installed. Um, so it puts it well ahead of competing bikes from Trek or Specialized. I did have a quick look at the Trek and Specialized options that would go up against this. and. Uh, in many cases in Canada, they would be $27.99, I think for both of their options that would be similar. But they did have a couple things. Um, so you'd be spending $27.99, you would get a dropper post on the Trek um, Fuel EX5 or the Specialized Stump Jumper ST Alloy. So they're both $27.99, but they come with a recon fork, and that's where I think this Giant fork, I think I would be happier to have that under me. They have similar level rear shocks, so that remains the same. The MT201 brakes um, are the same on this as they are on the Trek. The Specialized actually uses um, a Tektro brake, which would be a step down braking quality. Um, the Trek uses the same 
uh, Dior 1x12 drivetrain, so it's kind of an even match there, but the Specialized has that um, SRAM SX Eagle, so once again, we're on a cheaper bike here, and I would prefer this drivetrain over the Specialized. Um, and then the Specialized also has relatively a little bit narrower rims and narrow non-tubeless tires on there. And that's where I think these tires and this fork, it's going to make such a difference in how, how much confidence this bike actually gives you, having tires that really hold the ground properly. Um, so you're saving money on the bike and then saving money again, not having to upgrade tires, buy valves, get sealant, pay to have a tubeless job done. Um, so that's a real big bonus. The Trek Fuel EX5 at $27.99, once again a dropper post on it, um, but it has um, non-tubeless tires and then otherwise a similar brake, um, similar drivetrain. So this bike we would end up at uh, $2,400 to have a similarly equipped bike um, as far as having a dropper post, but a better setup on tires. Um, right out of the factory, which, yeah, like I said, if you're going to go buy these tires aftermarket, um, by the time you get tubeless tires, the sealant, the everything else, you're dropping almost an extra 300 bucks on one of those other bikes. So we're comparing a $2,400 bike, if we take this and put a dropper post on it, to over 3000 bucks to take a specialized um, Stump Jumper ST or a Fuel EX5 and to get it to the same end result. So, big fan of this guy. Um, one thing I will admit, so I would upgrade that seat post. I would also upgrade these uh, grips um, in a hurry. A, I don't like these grips. I find them to be just mushy marshmallow kind of things, but they're also not lock on. And these MT201s, while they're kind of a decent brake, they have a really long lever, so you have to ride them inboard from the uh, grips quite a bit. And what we find with these grips, when the, these bikes come back in after being used for a little bit, uh, the grips will tend to slide inwards quite a bit. So getting some lock-on grips will give you a, a much nicer feel under your hand or gloves, depending on how you do things. But you'll also be able to ride your uh, brake levers in further so you can more comfortably do one finger braking on here. So. This is the 2021 Giant Stance, the 27.5 wheel version, a $2,099 bike, and one that I think is an excellent option for somebody stepping into the full suspension world of mountain biking to give themselves confidence and comfort out on the trail. Um, this is the first one that we've got in for 2021. Do be warned um, if you're shopping elsewhere, especially in the States. Um, if Giant runs out of stock on these 34 Crest forks, um, they are trying to put something on that will be similar. So in this 2021 year where there's just a shortage of so many things to do with bikes, uh, forks is the one place that we have heard the warning uh, from Giant that uh, they can't keep up on production of those forks. So you may end up with uh, something slightly different on there. Um, also, their spec sheet uh, says that the rear hub on here is going to be one of their in-house brand hubs, but to put that uh, Shimano 1051 cassette on, they actually put Shimano hubs on this particular one, front and rear, and I'm not certain if that is going to be an ongoing thing or if we just got lucky on this, but that is... Um, a nice piece of extra quality having Shimano hubs. So, you know a little bit more about the 2021 Giant Stance. Any questions? We're here to help. Help you with sizing, any of that sort of stuff. Otherwise, if you're outside of the Alberta, Canada area, um, you know a little bit more uh, to be armed and dangerous when you go to your local shop and start inquiring about this bike. All the best in 2021, trying to find yourself a bike. Thank you.